Welcome back to the channel, guys. Welcome back. We got the Delta Force Vortex 24 Twin Motor Hydro on the block. This is part four to my build series. Uh, today, we're actually going to be permanently mounting our hardware, installing the motor servo mount, drilling through holes, possibly getting the drive line finalized. So, stick around. Big V, we're not clear. So after hours and hours and hours, like a week of del deliberation and de decision making, setups, this is what I come up with, okay? This is what I come up with. Running the extended brackets here, extended props, motors are going to be mounted a little bit forward of where I really wanted to mount them, but that's going to get my CG up to about right here. Okay, I can move these these ESCs around if I need to get my center of gravity back a little bit, but that's where we're aiming for, about right there, which is about center of my turn fin is where we're going to start off with. I can get it to the back of my turn fin. Okay, I uh, I ended up lowering my motors off camera. I actually sanded quite a bit off the front you can see how those holes are cut through and the back holes are not cut through so I sand it off the front at an angle I sand it off the motor mounts so I can get the motors lower lower the angle a little bit now you can't even see the tops of the motors over the top side I should be able to run those 2968s in here Later on, I got this angled and, and set up right so that those 2968s clear the canopy. Okay, so uh, final answer, we're running our motors forward, way more forward than I wanted to. Yeah, that's perfect. That's freaking perfect, man. That's freaking perfect. Yeah, we're going to go with it. We're going to go with it. All right. Okay, so I got my marks here where I'm going to situate and mount my motors. Uh, right now, I'm just going through roughing up this motor mount. Make sure that carbon fiber is roughed up on the motor mount, and we're going to need to do it in the boat. So I, I, took, a, I took a black marker and marked out where my, my mount's going to be. Okay, I used 60 grit, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, side to side. Uh, with this, with the motor mount, you know, you got these epoxy dam holes to kind of hold everything, hold the epoxy, hold it in, it grabs onto it. With the hole, you can't exactly drill a damn hole through it, right? So what I'm doing is uh, taking a, a razor knife hobby knife and okay roughing it up like scoring into this carbon fiber layout do like a cross hatch pattern whatever you want to do just don't go too deep you know that's gonna give you well damn I could feel it like sand paper it, it kind of sanded it smooth right so this, it, it'll, it'll leave some hole, like some, you know, pockets for epoxy to suck in and get, get into and hold it, hold it in. Okay, so now we need to clean it with some alcohol and I'll get some, some epoxy mixed up. I'm kind of using this adjustable ruler. I've already checked this, this line right here. It's parallel with the transom. I would use the transom, but this is just easier. So I'm just using my, my adjustable ruler make sure the top of my mount is parallel to the transom here okay I got a mark in the center make sure it's lined up dead nut center I got marks here so I'm taking my my ruler on that mark going center to my motor mount where the motor is going to be mounted make sure that's centered up can't go 
you know you can't hold it like this because this is a curve right here so you got to try to hold it in the same spot on both sides and it looks good it looks good um, back here back here we're going to do the same thing that goes on this side of the carbon fiber okay so this is off a little bit So I got my motor mount. It's just epoxied in the boat. I used a 30 minute epoxy and just brushed it on my mount, set the mount where it was or where it needed to be, made sure it was, you know, in the middle, level to the struts. And um, once it was dry, I took my Dremel and kind of roughed up the dry cured epoxy. Never lay down fresh epoxy on dry epoxy without sanding it you must sand it it's important it needs something to bond to just cured epoxy is really smooth and it'll it'll peel right off of it so i got some chopped up fiberglass chopped up carbon fiber and that venom carbon laminating resin okay also going to need some q-tips So it's the next day. We're about to uh, mount up the hardware here, you know, permanently. And the motor mount is all cured out. It's dry. It looks really good, actually. It looks pretty good. Um, I think, I think I'm gonna go ahead and sand it. And then uh, go over the sanded areas with some more epoxy just to uh, give it a nice look. Actually, actually, I don't know. I don't know, it looks good to, for my, I, yeah, that looks fine to me. You know, I, I I would run that. I would run it since I'm on YouTube here and uh, everybody judges me. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go ahead and kind of kind of sand it. You know, um, just kind of fix it up a little bit, tidy up, hit any high spots, and then we'll go over this with a with a coat of epoxy and uh we'll, we'll be done with it okay all right so i got it lightly sanded i didn't really spend too much time on it. i just wanted to kind of clean it up a little bit i got some epoxy gonna thin it out just a little bit and uh just go over where i sanded i got the uh motor mount worked out kind of sanded it put a little coat of epoxy on there it looks a little bit better um it's not, it's not perfect but it does look better so what I like to use is that Loctite Marine Adhesive Sealant for the base of my hardware. I don't have any, so I'm going to use some clear silicone, okay? And uh, this socket right here, all right? Um, I'd use either a flex driver to get in there or a socket. This boat here, I could use the socket. If you'll notice, I have some a piece of foam, a piece of foam that I put in there. Okay, so my nuts stay at the very at the very end, you know. So that's that's gonna help keep the nut in place. Also, also, if your nut keeps on falling out, if your nut keeps falling like falling out the socket when you go to put it in there, take you a little bit of silicone and just put a little bit of silicone on one side of your your socket and the silicone will hold that nut into place for you okay so I'm gonna go ahead and get all this done no point in videotaping it it's pr it's pretty straightforward pretty easy get a little bit of silicone on your finger okay a little bit of silicone not much or whatever adhesive you're using 
put it on the washer put your washer on your finger that way you can get that washer on your on your screws you can feel it and the washer stays on your finger boom 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 Boom, boom, boom. All right. Now, before you tighten up these two top screws or two, your first two screws, just make sure that the your, your strut is, is vertical. You know, you don't want it cocked to one side or whatever. So I got the hardware on. All right, everything's like vertical. The rudder's vertical. Okay, looks perfect. <laughs> All right, so now, now I'm going to go ahead and mount the turn fin bracket. Okay, I want to find, I really want to find the perfect length screw. So I may need to like run a couple different screws in there. I don't want a screw that's going to stick out real far on the inside because we're about to smear some RTV over both of the holes on the inside. Uh, Cause I, I don't use silicone on my on my turn fin brackets uh, or any adhesive sealant, you know, because I like to uh, you know mess around with the the lean in and out. So um, I use the RTV on the inside to waterproof it. I'll show you. It's gonna be kind of hard to get to and hard for you guys to see it. But. I really like how this turn fin bracket has an elongated hole on the bottom and the top you know it allows you to kind of mess around with uh, the lean really extreme leans or like where the, the turn fins mounted on the boat here my tubes all dried up unfortunately you guys aren't gonna be able to see me do this but I'm just gonna get a big old glob of it okay and I'm going to try to get it on on the tips of those screws. You know. All right. So I got a little glob on my nut plate. A little more than what I need, but uh, that'll work. That'll work. We're basically ready to um, to put the motors on the motor mount. Find out where our stuffing tube through hole will be for our uh, seven thirty seconds brass tube here. We're going to be running this with no Teflon liner, okay? Four millimeter to four millimeter flex cable stub shaft, okay? We have a four millimeter to four millimeter coupler for this Leopard Hobby X2 brushless motor, okay? Um, this is a 2850, so I like to use my flex driver. I'm using these little um, 2.5s here. I know they're not stainless, but um, it'll work. Hopefully, we don't get any water in the boat. <laughs> but uh, I'm using a little washer on there. Make sure the the screw that you pick out for your motor. Make sure the screw's not too long so it doesn't run into the the winds this one has a dust protector on it so just make sure your screw is not too long okay uh, arrange your motor on your motor mount uh, think about where the wires are where your wires are going to be located where your ESC is going to be located uh, before you mount it up so you don't have to uh, redo it I use this flex driver here with a little wrench on it works so freaking good like you can hold it you know and get into tight places uh, for those 2.5s I actually use a, um, a T9 a T9 star bit it actually works really good okay so um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the motors mounted up and we'll start figuring out where we're gonna put our through hole oh one of these freaking days I'll get the size of these damn screws right for y'all two millimeter okay two millimeter two millimeter screw I, I call them 2.5 I call them two I call them threes <laughs> two 
millimeter head screws on my motor. Jeez, how freaking hard is that to remember, B? Jesus Christ. <laughs> I love this thing, man. I love this damn flex driver. I'm not even kidding. It is so freaking handy, man. Oh, I love it. And those T9, that star bit I was telling you about, it works really, really good on slightly stripped out two millimeter screws. You know, like like uh, like grub screws for your couplers. Like on my on my um, Oxteen Marine boats, this is all I use. Like, cause I, I want to get my screws really tight, you know. And a lot of times these grub screws they they'll strip out easy with a regular hex. These T9s, man, they'll grab, and you can wrench down on it. I know, I know. Get a freaking, uh, what is that? What is that? One company that makes the, MIP, that makes the good hexes. M I, get a MIP. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So this, this coupler from Offshore Electrics, it was, it was not bored correctly. So just for, like, he's got another one coming. I, I, I emailed him and told him I had a, a, uh, a board that wasn't bored correctly on my coupler and he's he took care of it so he's I got a new one coming so I you know I didn't have anything to lose so I just drilled it out with a four millimeter drill bit and it it fits but it's not perfect you know what I'm saying it's not perfect so uh, we'll, we'll just use it just for setup the um, the final assembly will have a uh, a new coupler on it okay so we're just gonna kind of put this on there like so I'm gonna look at my um, in my boxes here and I'm gonna see if I have a uh, an old four millimeter cable that we can use to kind of figure out where we're gonna put our through hole. I know I got one in here. So I keep all my old cables, the ones that twist or something, I keep them. This is four millimeter. We'll be able to cut this down a little bit. So I got this scrap piece of cable here, okay? And we're actually uh, we're gonna kind of use this scrap piece of cable just as a reference to find where our stuffing tube is gonna go through the hole. So. I'm going to cut it and um, maybe right here we'll try it right there first and that should try that should give us a pretty good reference where to start drilling okay okay so I got that cable cut all right got it in my coupler pushed all the way up and that's about where our through hole is going to be. So just imagine the stuffing tube going through the hole. We got a little bit of play here. So the through hole is going to be just behind that cable. We'll use this paint marker here to mark it. Okay. About right there. So we're going to cut it in an elongated hole about right here. Same thing for this side. Okay. Boom. This is a paint marker. It will actually come off the hole with um with some alcohol. All right. My first hole, I'm going to go straight through it. Straight through the hole. combination of my file and a drill bit and angling and elongating this hole for my stuffing tube so as you can see the angle of my stuffing tube is still pretty steep okay so we're actually gonna flip the boat over and just kind of look at it 
and see if we need to take material off the back of the hole or forward of the hole it looks like we're see how it's kind of steep so it looks like we need to take material off back here on the outside of the hole you guys see how it's got that indention here and then on the inside you got your your cut forward okay so we're gonna work that out so we can get that stuff and tube in there but not not really taking the width off just taking the length off you know I got the uh, I got the holes drilled out here okay now I, I could run a liner but this is that cheap China liner cheap China stuff and tube trying to bend this stuff and tube it, it breaks I hate it I hate that cheap stuff and tube that comes with these four millimeter cables so I like using no liner, a KNS 730 seconds. Okay, so with this 730 seconds brass tube, it don't fit in the strut very good. You got a lot of a lot of play. Okay, so you gotta you're gonna have to shim that up. You're gonna have to shim this stuffing tube up. So what I like to do is use the included stuffing tube and liner that comes with a four millimeter cable go into the strut and then what we'll do is uh basically basically cut cut this about right here okay and then we'll run that we'll run that over our 730 seconds stuffing tube okay right. we need to start bending our 730 seconds stuffing tube okay so we kind of want we kind of want a little gap right here not much about like that all right maybe four or five millimeters no more okay Got our four or five millimeter gap, and what I like to do is um, mark it, mark where the forward part of the stuffing tube is, or the hole, I guess I should say, and the back of the hole. All right, see what I did there? Okay, so now we need to bend this stuffing tube to meet up to the strut. So. We're really going to bend just a little bit where it's going through the hole, not much. Okay, a little bend. It's not going to take much. That right there work okay so I need to match that up on my my other stuff and tube all right try to bend them the same same place identical bends okay
All right, so I think I think we're gonna stop here. We got the the stuffing tubes bent; they're ready to be epoxied in and cut. Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna start here so I can pick up here in my next video. You know, uh, so we can do the drive line and get the steering worked out all in one video. Okay, it's actually turning out extremely good. I mean, it looks. It looks good. It looks really good. So let's go ahead, throw the batteries in. Let's throw the ESCs in it. And uh, let's get a weight. Let's get a weight on it. I got my scale here. Okay. And uh, I'll let you guys go. The video's gotten extremely long. And I know you guys are probably about to change the channel. So <laughs> um, four pounds, eight ounces. Without the hatch. Four pounds, 12 ounces with the hatch. I was shooting for three and a half, four pounds. I went over, <laughs> I went over about a half pound over my target weight. So these motors are 400 watts each, 800 watts total, continuous. 800 watt burst for one motor, 1600 total burst. So 800 continuous total. 1600 burst for a four pound boat that should be good we got two props to 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 push the boat through the water so i, I think that's going to be on par okay um my escs i could basically run these escs here or i can move them all the way forward and i just did it all like all my after i basically i got my center of gravity basically from here forward and here aft that's my my window okay so I, I think it's gonna be a fast little boat I really do um, the motor mount turned out really good I could have spent more time on getting it to look better on my, my epoxy joint there but I figured everything's gonna be covering it up so what's the point you know it's in there it ain't going nowhere We'll see you guys next time. If you found this video helpful or entertaining, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell to get notified for future builds, future projects. Big B, we're not at RC.